Hello, my name is Vanessa Sanchez Shimizu and I'm a UKRI Future Leaders Fellow and Lecturer at the Department of Infectious Diseases in Imperial College London. I'm a research scientist interested in genetics and infection and my lab studies why certain people develop life-threatening infections from common bacteria and viruses that normally only cause mild disease in most of us. So what is a life-threatening infection? As the name implies, uh, it is an infection that either causes death or causes a very serious infection requiring admission to hospital and uh, usually intensive care support. This takes the form of usually a brain or a blood infection known as uh, meningitis or encephalitis or sepsis. The infection is usually triggered by common pathogens. So these are bacteria and viruses that we normally encounter in our lives. Uh, most of us actually carry a lot of these viruses and bacteria transiently in our noses and in our airways, and this usually has no consequence. Um, and these infections are triggered by uh, bacteria and viruses such as meningococcal bacteria. Meningococcal bacteria is known to cause invasive meningococcal disease, uh, which results in sepsis or meningitis. Uh, another type of common infection uh, by a virus is HSV-1, which causes the common cold sore. But again, in one in a million cases, uh, does a child infected by HSV-1 come down with life-threatening uh, herpes encephalitis. And finally, uh, something maybe we're more familiar with right, uh, right now with the pandemic is the coronaviruses, which can also cause critical COVID-19 disease, yet in the majority of the population doesn't cause significant uh, illness. So these bacteria and viruses usually cause very mild illness across the majority of the population, and only in a tiny minority is there this uh, life-threatening disease. So why is this important? It's very important to study these life-threatening infections because there's very little we know about why these individuals develop uh, such critical disease in face of uh, common pathogens that most of us have no uh, problems with. And um, not only does it help us uncover what went wrong with that particular individual, but although rare, by discovering what went wrong, horribly wrong in that one person, we can learn a lot about how we normally overcome infection with that particular um, bacteria or virus. And by learning that, it provides us with alternatives to disease prevention and treatment. So just one highlight point here is that, you know, this I'm, I'm studying rare diseases. These life-threatening infections occur in really the minority. So one, between one in 100,000 to one in a million of the population are affected by this, um, by various pathogens. Um, yet uh, rare disease research can have far-reaching effects because of what we can learn from the biology of these, uh, these rare disease. Now, how do we study these uh, life-threatening infections? Um, we're very lucky here at St. Mary's to have a dedicated clinic looking at um, uh, those that have had life-threatening infections who are otherwise healthy and don't have any other known uh, immune risk factors. And we ask that they take part in our genetic study where we can then sequence their DNA and look for any changes that may explain why it is that they developed this serious infection um, when most of us have no problem with it. Um, we also study their cells uh, and how they respond to infection in a petri dish. And um, so we take the information that we get from the DNA sequencing, as well as the information we get from uh, their cells and try to understand what it is that went wrong. Now, going back to uh, understanding the genetics of infection, the one point I wanted to make was in fact, infection can be controlled by your genetic makeup. Now, you may not be alone in thinking that genetics isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about infection. Um, I think the main key factors that most people will think about in determining infection outcome is first of all, of course, the exposure to the pathogen or exposure to the bacteria or virus. Now, uh, this is absolutely necessary to actually initiate the infection, but um, the infection alone or the exposure to the 
to the bacteria, the exposure to the virus alone is not sufficient to actually cause disease. Um, this is very clear when we actually look um, at the population uh, level of infection, where we actually observe that the majority of the population usually doesn't get sick from a particular pathogen. So if we take, for example, HSV1, which usually causes mild disease in most of us, actually we usually don't even have um, know that we're sick with HSV1, and some people get cold sores from it, actually the majority of the population uh, will be infected and not, not know it. And in the very rare, uh, you know, one in a million uh, case, you will actually develop CNS disease. So the fact that we see this uh, clinical variability across the population exposed to the same bug tells us that there must be something inherently different about each one of us in our response to that infection. And so we believe that this is actually controlled genetically. Now, the other thing that uh, if someone asked you what is the key factor that determines infection, um, this would be our immune response and maybe antibodies. So uh, our prior immunity obviously would shape uh, the outcome of infection. Now all this, the immune response actually can, is all genetically controlled. So the idea that our genetic makeup can actually control how our body responds to infection is not so far-fetched. And uh, in fact, now we have proof um, as a result of uh, various years, I mean, actually decades of research in this field, um, we ha now have identified over 400 genes that are known to control infection outcome uh, due to different types of uh, pathogens. So uh, my second point here I wanted to highlight was that your genes can definitely impact your response to infection and genetics is a huge contributor to this. So just as an, as an example of uh, what I've been talking about and the type of uh, genetic discoveries we make for explaining life-threatening infections, I thought I'd just uh, bring up our most recent contribution to understanding COVID-19. So the pandemic virus, SARS-CoV-2 is a coronavirus and it infects the uh, majority of the population resulting in mild disease or no symptoms at all. And only in a, mo in a minority does it actually cause life-threatening COVID-19 disease. And so what we set out to do was to try to understand why it is that uh, people develop critical COVID-19 disease by comparing the DNA from those patients who got life-threatening SARS-CoV-2 infection or COVID-19 disease with those that had no symptoms or just mild disease after infection, we were able to find some changes or mutations in genes that control a particular pathway known as type 1 interferons. So type 1 interferon is a powerful molecule that is very important in um, first of all, alerting the body of a viral infection, and number two, in kickstarting the immune response and our fight against uh, the virus so that we can eliminate the virus from our bodies. Now, patients who got critical COVID-19 disease happen to have mutations or changes in genes that control the type 1 interferon pathway. And in fact, what, that ha what it ended up doing was that these critical COVID-19 patients actually had no real functional um, uh, type 1 interferon, which uh, could actually alert the body to disease or produce this uh, protective uh, protein. Now, this discovery made it very clear that these molecules are key in preventing life-threatening infection. And now they're undergoing clinical trials as an alternative treatment for COVID-19 disease and to see if we can prevent severity of COVID-19. So that concludes my talk on one in a million, understanding the genetics of life-threatening infections. And I hope that I've convinced you that one, genetics can actually play an important role in an infectious disease outcome. And number two, that studying rare diseases has many far-reaching benefits beyond just explaining the person who had the particular critical uh, infection. Thank you very much for listening.